Hey everyone, it's Darby from Blue Television Games. Today we'll be looking at some secrets, tips, and tricks for one of my favorite games, Super Mario Bros. 3. We'll be looking at some well-known secrets as well as some that you may have never seen before. Let me know any secrets, tips, and tricks I didn't cover in the comments below, and be sure to sub and like if you enjoy the video. Alright, let's get started. Alright, first up, we're going to check out the three warp whistles in Super Mario Bros. 3. The first one can be found in level 1-3. Once we get to these blocks here, we'll want to get rid of the Koopa and hold down on the white block in the middle. After a few seconds, you'll pass through like so. Run to the end of the level and we'll be teleported to a toad house. One toot on this whistle will send you to a faraway land. That's right, with these whistles, we can skip entire worlds. In World 1 Fortress, we'll find our second whistle. Once we get to this section with the dry bones, we'll take him out. Use the raccoon suit to fly straight up. We'll go across the top level. Once we hit a wall, we'll hit up and it will teleport us to this room with the second whistle. Nice and easy. The third whistle is in world two. The top corner of the map, use your hammer on the rock. If we stop at the toad house, we can pick up a frog suit. Getting back on track, we'll go down for the fire brothers fight. I don't recommend trying to use the frog suit to do this, but it works just fine. No matter what suit we use, we get the third whistle here. Once you have your first two whistles, you can actually warp straight to World 8. Use the first whistle on World 1. Once we appear on the Welcome to Warp Zone screen, all we gotta do is use our second whistle. Once you use the second whistle, it'll teleport us straight down to World 8. Enter the pipe, and there you go. Since we're talking about World 8, I might as well mention one of my favorite tricks in the game. And that's making this ship level even easier. Hop into the water when there's a break between the two ships and then slowly try to make Mario go underneath the second ship. Once he's under, tap the swim button and just keep tapping, tapping, and tapping. If you don't tap fast enough, you will drown. There will be another break in the ships and this time we'll need to go underneath the third ship and then repeat the same process. Tap the swim button so we don't drown and eventually we'll get to the end of the ship. Once we do, we can hop up over from the left and go into the pipe and then defeat Boom Boom and finish the level. Next, I'll show you a little exploit in the World 3 Fortress. Now this is a level if you know which door to go into, it can be quite easy. But if you forget, you just have to keep trying different doors, trying to find your way to the end of the level. There is a little trick. Once you go through a wrong door, if you realize it's a wrong door, you can hit up just in time. If you do it just right, you'll teleport out of the pipe at the beginning and get another shot. Here it is in slow motion. Hit up again and oddly teleport through this pipe. Now this might seem pretty useless, but there's actually a trick to it. If you go through door number three using this method, hit up just in time, you'll be teleported to the Boom Boom fight. You can actually skip most of the level pretty easily. Now let's head over to world seven for an even bigger skip. In level seven one, you begin the stage and there's three pipes and a door. If you run at the door and jump at the corner of the block above it just right, you'll glitch through the wall. And when you do, it'll push you out through the other side. Take a few more steps forward and you'll realize you're at the very end of the level. This may take a few tries to do, so don't be discouraged if you don't get it right away. Next up, I'm gonna show you kind of an odd glitch, I guess you'd call it. But if we drop behind a white platform and then go into a pipe, it can cause some weird things to happen. In this level in World 3, we actually end up behind the blue water. Even stranger, if we swim in front of a cheap cheap, we'll see a blue silhouette of Mario appear where he'd normally be. If we slow it down, you can really see it's definitely very strange. If you exit a pipe, it will go back to normal. There's not much of a point to doing this other than it's kind of fun to mess around with. Did you know that if you hit a muncher with your tail, it'll actually change it into a block? Here it is again in slow motion. Kind of cool, kind of weird. Speaking of weird, did you know you can kill a burner with a Tanuki suit? If you start up an airship level in the Tanuki suit and you jump in the air and turn into a statue on top of a burner, you will destroy it. I definitely recommend trying this out. There's something very oddly satisfying about doing this. And while we're here, if you're able to finish an airship level with the Tanuki suit equipped, you'll get a new message from the king. Thank you, kind raccoon. Please tell me your name. If you're able to finish an airship with the frog suit, you'll actually get an even better message. Oh me, oh my, you've been transformed. Shall I change you back with this wand? And my favorite of the three, if you're able to finish an airship with the hammer bro suit, we get, hey you, how about lending me your clothes? No dice, what a drag. <laughs> That's awesome. 
Speaking of the hammer suit, one thing you cannot do in the hammer suit is slide down slopes. In World 6, you uncover a vine that takes you up to this area. If you hit the P-switch quickly and you have a fire flower, you can head to the right. Once you do, you'll find some ice blocks with coins as well as some ice blocks with munchers. Attack the ice blocks with the munchers so we can go in this pipe. This question mark block contains a hammer bro suit. If you go up to the right side and you time it perfectly, you can slide down and get the suit while in the sliding animation. This shows you what the hammer suit would look like if it could slide down slopes. Next up, let's talk about how you can get the coin ships in Super Mario Bros. 3. The first step is we need our coins to be in a multiple of 11, and then the tens digit in our score must match that multiple of 11. So we have 55 coins here, we have a 5 in the tens place. For another example, here we have 99 coins and we have a 9 in the tens place. The final step is when we hit the goal, we want our timer to be on an even number. So here we have 11 coins and a 1 in the tens digit. Now notice the hammer bro turns into a coin ship. This can be done in some other worlds as well. In world 3 we can turn one of the hammer bros into a coin ship, and then in world 5 we can also turn one of the hammer bros into a coin ship. And then finally in world 6 we can turn the hammer bro there into a coin ship as well. Let's talk about how you can get a lot of extra lives really early in the game. In World 1-2, once you pass this little T-shaped set of pipes, you'll notice that one of the pipes dispenses Goombas non-stop. What we want to do is bounce high off of a Goomba and have a raccoon suit on so we can float down real slow. Eventually you'll get 8,000 points for one and then you'll get a 1-up. And once you get a 1-up, you'll keep getting 1-ups until you either mess up or the time runs out. This is one of the earliest places in the game you can easily rack up a bunch of lives. In the fortress in World 2, there's another spot where we can gain a bunch of lives just like this as well. Once the level starts, we'll head right and we'll see some dry bones. Keep going right until you have all three dry bones on one screen. Once you do, you can start bouncing off them and just like the Goombas, once you get 8,000, the next one will give you a 1-up. Every time you crush one, another should be reviving itself. You can do this over and over and over again until once again you either mess up or run out of time. In World 3-4, there's a trickier method to set up, but once you do, it's the easiest and quickest way to max out your lives. Once we get to this hill with three Koopa Troopas, we're going to want to snag one of their shells and head to the right. At this question mark block, I recommend stopping and getting a power-up. The Koopa Troopa will come back to life and you'll lose your power-up. We want to head right far enough for the Lakitu to spawn. Once he does, jump on the Koopa Troopa, grab the shell, and now head left. Once we get to the two wooden blocks, we want to throw the shell in between them. Now stand in the middle. You'll know you're not in the right spot if you get hit by a spiny. If you get dead center, the Lakitu should bounce the spinies off the pipe and you'll never get hit. Once you have the method set up, it's super easy. All you do is sit here and let the shell keep hitting the spinies as you get 1-ups. As I said, this method's a little trickier to set up, but once you do, you can rack up a lot of lives really, really fast. All right, next we're going to talk about the white toad houses. These are special toad houses that appear for getting a certain number of coins in certain levels. You'll get cool things like this P-Wing. In World 1-4, you're going to need 44 coins. If you're able to do so, you'll get the white toad house and inside you'll get a P-Wing. Now World 2-2 is a little bit trickier, so I'll walk you through this one. Make sure to snag these three coins and head right. Once we get to this moving platform, the first thing we're going to want to do is collect all the coins and not hit any bricks except for this first one right there. Once we get these three coins, we want to head back to the beginning and jump on the lift again. This time we'll hit the second brick. It uncovers a P-switch, which will change these blocks into coins. These last two here will make a big jump. Bounce off him if you need to and collect the last four coins. If done correctly, you'll unlock the next white mushroom house and you'll get an anchor. World 3A can be a bit tricky, especially with these water sections. You're going to need 44 coins in this one. If you get all 44 coins, you go into the white toad house and you'll get a P-Wing. In World 4-2, you're going to need 24 coins. If you get those 24 coins, you'll be rewarded with an anchor. 5-5 can be a little bit tricky, but if you're able to get 28 coins in this white mushroom house, you will get another P-Wing. On World 6-7, you want to make sure you have a Fire Flower at the end of the level and you've collected all the coins so far. The reason you want that Fire Flower is once you drop down, you'll have a bunch of coins sealed by ice blocks. Only the Fire Flower can open up these blocks so you can collect all the coins you need. You're going to need 78 coins in this level. 
If you get all 78 coins, you will be rewarded with another anchor. The final white mushroom house is in level 7-2. Now what you're going to want to do on this one is use the frog suit. You have to have the frog suit in order to do this one. I don't think you could do it without it. Make sure we get this coin in that question mark block there. Once we drop down here, we're going to want to swim to the left. So we get to the left, we'll have a bunch of coins. Collect these before hitting the P-switch. Once we have all these coins, we can jump on the P-switch and head right. Now you're going to want to swim really fast. You need to collect this section of coins, then hurry to the right and collect this section of coins as well. As far as I know, the frog suit is the only way you can do that fast enough to collect all the coins before the P-switch runs out. You get these 46 coins and you get another P-wing. Thank you, Toad. If you've played Super Mario Bros. 3, you know if you collect three star cards, you get a five up. Did you know that you can manipulate it to where you get a star every single time just by going full speed and hitting the bottom left corner of the box? It's really that easy. The only thing you want to be careful of is there's not enough room at the end of some levels to get to max speed. So if you have to be a little creative, run back and forth, just make sure Mario's arms are out and that P meter is maxed out. If you have everything set up just right, hit that bottom left corner and every time you'll get those stars for those easy five ups. Here's a really cool trick that makes fighting Bowser as easy as possible if you have a P wing. Fly through Bowser's castle like so. Be a little careful in this section, it's pretty easy to get hit here. Once you get past those, uncover this block, crouch fly, and you can actually skip that little section there. Keep heading right until we get to the door. Now fly across this section, be careful not to get hit by any of the lasers, and you'll find this Bowser statue right here. Crouch fly up, above his head, and you'll kind of glitch through the wall like so. Once we glitch through the wall, fly through this section until we get to another door. Now we're at the Bowser fight, but before you go right, head left over this wall. Drop down onto this door, don't go too far left or you'll trigger a Bowser battle. Fly back to the first room and fly far enough right to uncover Bowser. Notice he's not blowing out fire. On top of that, if you hold down and crouch, he cannot hit you. That's actually because there's a problem with Bowser's hitbox, and if you crouch, he just cannot hurt you whatsoever. That in combination with that glitch we just did, which keeps him from throwing out fireballs, makes this fight insanely easy. Once there's only one block left, move to the left out of the way, and Bowser takes himself out. Now if you don't have a P-Wing, you can still do this fight pretty easy as well. The only difference is he's going to be shooting out fireballs because you can't fly over the wall. But notice as small Mario, we don't even need to duck because his hitbox is screwed up and he cannot damage us. As long as we stay right in the middle of him, he's not going to hit us with any of the fireballs. Once there's one block left, once again move out of the way and let him take himself out. So once we beat the game and the words the end appear on the screen, we need to hit the start button. If you've never started another game after you beat Super Mario Bros. 3, you're missing out on a big treat. Open up your item inventory and you have four rows of P-Wings. Quite an awesome reward for beating a fantastic game. All right guys, that's gonna conclude our look at Super Mario Bros. 3 secrets, tips, and tricks. Let me know some that I might have missed in the video in the comments below, as well as some of your favorites from the video. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up, and if you're new to the channel and you like what you see, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Thank you guys so much for watching, and until next time, I'll see you around.